He's not plugged into anything right now. It's the, nope, it's mom, the dark no arts. <laughs> Saya. Dark arts. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh, some, that's crazy. Give me some reverb, uh, some feedback. It really holds on. Kind of makes you think you, if you look inside the ukulele, it's just this big cathedral. It's like, like what amp are you using? Like you're saying. Uh, yeah, so it's like bringing the cathedral. It's like bringing <laughs> the cathedral inside of your ukulele. It creates this huge soundscape, like you're in a hallway or a bathroom. What does? This thing. This device. So this is a Leolani ukulele it has a solid cedar top laminate ebony back and sides and it also has this device which allows you to have effects acoustically mm. which is weird saying right yeah. effects like the, acoustically you know the tone would end. not plugged in effects <laughs> you know which acoustic is, effects which is usually like how tobias does it right analog delay he'll do his like uh how does he do that like I can't even do He does the repeating. Yeah. I, I'm terrible. terrible but he, he's created a way to create this analog delay and like softly pull back on the delay. But with this, I can be like, oh, you know what? I want some delay. Let me just turn it on. And then boom, you're Tobias. <laughs> so the wheel on that one controls the time of the delay? No, it's actually just the level. Oh, try turn um, it. There's another knob that changes the, the timing, right? Um, so, oh, I thought it was the, the timing. Oh, so maybe. Sorry, I could be mistaken. Yeah. Here's the here's the shortest delay possible. Maybe it can go shorter. Oh wow! And it it comes out more as you punch into it. So if you're just light finger picking, that's crazy. Those are just you know, all the effect is just this soundscape behind the fundamental tones you know it's like it makes you think like if you were to stick your head in the ukulele oh. it's like there's a whole oh. other world it's just called for some stank face <laughs> some stank face I saw, I saw you doing it the whole time <laughs> oh, stank body note. see there's stank face and there's <laughs> fart note fart and face. if you if you if you're in the inn you know what a fart note is Corey what's a fart note that is when it buzzes nope Oh. Well, I guess there is it's that an fart undesirable. Note. But to yeah. me, fart note was yeah, it was not a part of the scale. You messed up, and then people go like, "Oh, I'm playing jazz." <laughs> oh, and then all that's, of a sudden it's, the it's harsh. All of a sudden it's chromatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, this thing is awesome, man. It's it's really cool to have this effects while you're playing acoustically, and it just um, brings out different sides of you that you might not, you know. Just play it acoustically without the effects. It changes sure. the way you play overall because you, you, you can get better ideas of mm -hmm. what you want to. What I, well for me, what what reverb does is it allows me to play one note or one chord and let it ring out. Yeah. Don't feel rushed to go to the next chord or just. I love that. Le letting the thing, you know, letting it die out slowly. <laughs> My is mind the, is, is that blown. the meme thing, the yeah. Jackie Chan. Uh... <laughs> no, no, that was. That's when somebody does something wrong. Mine is the gif of the guy. Like, you know, my mind is blown. Multiple explosions. So, yeah, I mean, I really feel like, you know, if, if especially if you like effects already, I feel like some sometimes there's purists out there who don't really care for the effects, right? Anything you put effects is just like, what is this garbage? I think the most important effect is like reverb, the most usable mm -hmm. one. So it's like... What's cool is this has a under saddle pickup. Right and the unit works together with the effects unit there so um yeah so the this effects eff also carry through to the to um, the main to your main signal so right. you can have the same exact sound that you practice with in your home when no one's awake and you're just by yourself in your room making noise with these effects you can go on stage the next day and have the same type of uh connection mm -hmm. to the sound because it's the same thing so you're controlling the same knobs, but you know, going through a PA or and whatever it, it may be. Amazing through the through an amp. It's like, and I mean, it sounds better than the reverb that's built into the amp. So, but that right? is the it's cool like, part too. Like, if you don't have an amp and a whole setup of pedals and everything, and you just you say you're going to go to an open mic or something, they just have a PA system. Yeah. you can plug in and it's exactly. already there. You don't got to get everything set up. You don't have to go shopping for an amp and figure all that out. 
And that's the exact reason why I got a like a vocal pedal because when I sing, like I want to have reverb for certain parts, but not the whole thing. And if you don't have a sound guy, you gotta be like, hey, bro, I'm gonna reverb right now on the on the you know. With this, it's kind of like the same effect. Some songs you might want some reverb. Some songs you might want delay. Some songs you might whatever it calls for. That's what I was just thinking too. Is like the delay would be really um, useful in like the reggae stuff, like especially oh, what sure. Tobias does. Sure, I mean you could probably you should probably play that the kind of thing. You could get like a yeah, double d- between that artificial one he did on top of it. Yeah. You know yeah. how you can time the delay to give you double time, you know? Yeah, is it so you just to adjust that knob? To so where yeah, so that knob is the the time and I think the bottom you get, I guess it stays the same. I think it's a really quick taper at the bottom, so it's just a really quick shift from it being off to it being on, and then it's all the time. You know that thing Mike Love does though with the delay where it like double times over it? Oh, right, right. Where you gotta have perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's another thing that it could promote is your practice of timing. When you play with delay, you're playing with something mm-hmm. that's giving See, you like, the, at that like delay a metronome. Time. It's a metronome that follows you. It helps you follow like your natural sync. Because exactly. say you play out of time, but then you finally pick up on your own rhythm, so yep. you will fall into a time signature right. at least, even if you're not. If you're at 63 rather than 60, you know, you right. fall into it. And it's easier to play with a delay than like a looper where you have to set up this whole bass track and then play on top of it. If you just have like this quick little second, oh, just as yeah. that one last note, yeah. you can be like, oh, yeah, okay. And then oh, there it is. you're playing that, that, with That's someone. giving you the timing. Like, okay, that, that, that. Okay, so that, with us today, that. we have Russ, oh. and he's been a contributing author to the Ukulele Review. So sure has. he's just one of the guys, so we didn't do anything formal to introduce, but... Yeah. This is the first time we're having you on the podcast, and um, I feel like we've done this before just because we talk with Russ all the time. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, four years. Yeah, uh, four years of writing. <laughs> we're we're gonna be losing you to the mainland. <sighs> to the mainland, gross. <laughs> just gross. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. So so what 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 was the <laughs> the job position that that you're moving? Like you're doing the same Snap job, but just in like in a different location. Uh, no, I'm doing a slightly different job. Okay, okay. And, you know, and it's gonna be much more sweaty because it's in Georgia. <laughs> you you work Georgia. Yeah. For the Air Force. Yeah. Top secret work. Yeah, you know I. I, I can't but you fly. You. But you fly planes. Yeah, there are there are planes involved. It's the Air Force. <laughs> That's okay, you don't have to say anything more. It's the new ground <laughs> division. Yeah, the yeah. Air Force. You know, so no, sorry, tell me boats. about the Air Force. No. Well, we start with boats. <laughs> then you put wings on them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. They're basically seaborne boats. Airborne boats. No, yeah, you can't land the plane in the ocean, right? Most the Navy can. Uh, you know what's cool? You know what I like, too? This has a USB charging yeah. plug. No, so no there's more no battery. battery. To add to the list. Oh, come on. What how else I, do you how want? Am I not it's so get it. easy. We're going to make one of those commercials where it's like, are you tired of fidgeting with replaceable batteries? And it's like the black and white lady. Like, and just, you know, trying to yeah, the is it double thing. or triple? I don't even know. A, B, no. D. I, I bought double, it, but it turned out to be triple. I bought G, C, E, A, and A batteries. And none of them are working. <laughs> well, somebody's marketing work. But, um, she goes to yeah. replace the batteries. It just throws the ukulele. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the ukulele breaks in half somehow. <laughs> Dang batteries. I mean, oh, it's rad. It's cool. So there, we're going to have this one with the solid cedar top, and then we're going to have a laminate, a uh, Hawaiian mango laminate that Leolani's doing with um, this super cool new thing that gives you acoustic amplification and effects. What, and are, they, uh, what are they priced at? About 400 bucks is what we're going to sell them for. So that's crazy, right? The, the thing that I really like about it is like ukulele in itself is a portable instrument. You love it because it's portable. You can hold it and take it anywhere you want. You could bring it on airborne boats. Yep, yep. And then, uh, but with all these effects, effects are inspirational in themselves, you know? Yeah. Like, like, like um, what we were saying earlier, uh, did you say airborne boats? Yeah. Also known yeah. as airplane. That was a call back to three minutes ago. Right. <laughs> Sorry. I love calling. <laughs> <laughs> but Russ, Russ came in the shop one day. Um, show, I think it was you're showing us your old guitar. At the ES-125. Yeah. But but he in his backpack, he's like, do you want to hear how it sounds like? I'm like, well, we have an app here. He's like, no, no, no. So he gets out an iRig, an iPad, uh, plug it in. So there's this whole, you know, thing you got to do to get it to make sound. 
Yeah. But if it you just, just... It's got pros and cons. I like that a lot more. Right. Well, I, that's an acoustic instrument, so I guess that's more so... The iRig, you know, still serves its purpose for the electric, maybe. Yeah, sure. You know, without the acoustic capabilities. Well, I don't know, because that does everything else. I mean, the ES-125 had a pickup, so like, right. you're still hearing it, but now you get to hear the acoustic form as well. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know. Like, it might be better than a 1954 Gibson ES-125. <laughs> so how many instruments would you sell to get that one now? The 400? Yeah. Oh, man, jeez. He can just get it. You don't need to sell nothing. <laughs> oh, I... I wasn't paying attention. There, to you. Is that the rules? You gotta sell one to get one. No, no, no. I'm not there yet. Okay. My wife is very supportive right, of right. the collection, just yeah. so long as I don't put it up on the walls. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. But that's so great. Like you could, you know, how else are you gonna get reverb on the beach? No, I mean it's. Uh, Jenny, jamping. Jenny, yeah, the, like, the owner of the company, brought it over yesterday, and I mean, I was kind of blown away. Sounds like an event so theme. I gave it to Joel oh today to. Uh, set it up and put the Kolau Aho Lo G set on. Yeah, I feel like that definitely brings out a little bit of punchiness out of it. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a little bit of setup work and that thing is hard to deny. Yeah, I like Leolones with the Lo G anyway. Like they they just sound good. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Leilani has a bad setup. I'm just saying like because of this capability, like in my head, like I'll sacrifice some like maybe discomforts because like it's able to do what it can do but it's already set up actually i felt comfortable with it i when i'm playing it it feels fine i can play like a normal instrument i'm not sacrificing my uh you know my play style mm-hmm. with, it's, it's not a you bad setup. it feels good it feels like the, the normal leolani's but it just has this capability so already it, it scores you know more points just because i'm so impressed with what it can sound like with that speaker in there yeah i'm on the home stretch of collecting ukuleles and i didn't want an, a leilani <laughs> and now i really do <laughs> yeah this one's cool <laughs> It's so cool. You yeah. know, like you could just you get swept up in the effects. I love it. So what, what would you use on it for your personal taste? There's chorus. There's a I, delay. I don't, I don't think chorus works great with you I, I, personally. I you, don't. Just, you just got to play the chord and make it work. Oh, yeah, maybe. Do you have a chord? Is, that's not I, chorus on right now. Yeah, make um, him play with the chorus. And sweat. I don't know. I guess so. It's just oh, I just gave it a different attitude. See, like you now can it make creates a, di- it's a different man. color. Yeah. You're, you're working with a different, a different thing. Just because it's brown paint, it can still look good. <laughs> it's not bad. It's like green pants. I, I, can, Joel pants say, um, I was gonna say Joel. <laughs> uh, hey, can you figure out good? Nirvana? It smells like Teen Spirit right now. That always has chorus on it. So da 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 da. da. Oh, that's not. That's come as you are. Come as you are. Sorry. sort of thing like because that that um riff has that chorus effect you know so anytime sure, you play yeah. like maybe the, yeah something that has that effect in your head okay so this week we're kind of just going to be going through a number of different cool radical arrivals Corey, you picked up some stuff at koaloha yesterday that's in that radical category oh yeah let's take a look 
Oh, this song got the reverb. Zach's got to go to a gig tonight. And um, so uh, we'll catch you soon, man. I'll see you guys next time. Sorry, I had to leave early. But you're in good hands. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. I have hands. You don't need my opinions anymore. <laughs> Look at all these hands. hands. Pops outdid himself again. Made the ultimate pineapple to hang on your wall. I think soon it will be an actual and pineapple. Then play of course too it's pretty nuts because like the kamaka pineapple like the the historical pineapple it's uh less pineapple and more egg shaped uh, pine it hints at pineapple right but that there's no denying it it's got crowns like multiple crowns <laughs> yeah so this was a collaboration with dino and i, I don't want to butcher his last name we gotta write it down yeah. every yeah. time meridian, meridian. We said it together, so if we're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. <It's laughs> I think that is how you say it, though. Man, that and thing is dope. I love the texture. There's the way it feels when you're touching it. It's, it's cool. Yeah, so... Yeah, the spruce has, like, a real sharp what, tone. That's what lends itself to that. Matches for that, you know, really happy mm -hmm. up tempo music. Something along the lines of that. That's definitely the logical end to that song. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be minor. So this is gonna be a maybe an auction, huh? I think we really kinda kinda hold it up, give it a full turn again. Oh sorry. Oh wait. Like it looks, like it feels good too when you're like holding it. It's all yeah. textured. And if you, if you forgot how handsome the creator was, <laughs> you look in the bug up. <laughs> Pops himself. You know what, what I love about here. Koaloha is that like they're the, uh, you remember in high school there was like the, the weird set of art kids would just go out and do whatever they wanted and they would use like oh, older yeah. stuff more yeah. established stuff i like that's koaloha they're right down the road from kamaka but they don't do traditional yep. ukuleles they got their own bracing Brown their thing. own styles very Brown rebellious system. yeah like he actually didn't even yeah one of the things about pops is he didn't he didn't exactly learn from anybody he thought about it he came up with his own ways i love it and it's obvious that they're so willing to 
take risks and do something else. You remember when they had um, the ukuleles with two different woods on the soundboard? That was great. Mm -hmm. It was... All kinds of stuff from them throughout the years. Yeah, it, it, they're very experimental. They'll throw anything out. And... It's like that with most things, right? Like you take... If you aren't brought into it inside of the normal right. box of what is like the right way of doing things, yeah. then just from the get-go, your mind is looking from like an outside perspective and finding its own way. And yeah, you don't it's a little feel, freer. Yeah. yeah. You could do some pretty crazy stuff if you don't follow the rules. And honestly, what kind of rules Think are there? Think outside of the box. Yeah. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you got it there in your hands now? Another uh, pineapple sundae. Except um, this one is going to be on the affordable side. The MSRP, I, I believe, was around a thousand dollars. It's all solid acacia. Oh, no it's way. Like the OPO. Yeah, it's uh, made in the OPO factory where they do spectacular work. And uh, as you can see, um, I mean, it looks good. It sounds good. I mean, good. this is really cool really because. Job. The demand for the pineapple sundae never, um, you know, I mean, they're putting it out there um, from the Opio factory. We're going to probably be able to get it more consistently than the Hawaiian ones um, that are just made by Pops and also a little bit more affordable. So, yeah, you get all the coolness of Pops sundae for yeah. less. Yeah, it, it, it really struck me the first time I saw the, the one that was like maple and spruce is uh, very for, very much for affluent people, you know? Like when you walk into a big house, it's in a lit case and they say, oh, don't touch it. But, you know... It, it still oh, looks like that. It, it does, yeah. it yeah. does. But like, that's way more affordable. Yeah. Just like the OPOs, it's just, you know, easier on the wallet. Yeah. I like that band on the side right below the... Oh yeah, right on the waist. All the small details. There's something really almost cool. of a, I don't know, um, animated kind of a look to it. Yeah. Well, you get that iridescence from the curl on the wood, but then also like just the texture from the the pineapple. Yeah, the lines. Yeah. It just yeah. That's everything about it. Super cool. I mean, these are all, it feels cool to hold too. Even when you're like finger picking and stuff, the way you can anchor your fingers yeah. up there on those spots, yeah. it feels really nice. It's like it was made for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun use to play. Really good for like strumming. Yeah, it's really punchy. Sounds really good for, you know, finger picking stuff, you know. frozen boot <laughs> <laughs> Like 
So you can't listen to that and not wish for a washboard. <laughs> We're going to be doing more features on those instruments. Um, this came in today, and it was made by Bo Hannum, and it is super cool. Does that thing not have frets? No, it doesn't. Oh, so. it's naked. <laughs> So when, we're going to do some samples like plugged in with some compression and stuff too because he was telling me like that's really you add a lot of sustain you know adding compression to that and it has yeah. a really cool sound and that um has a pickup in it and everything but, oh cool um grab the specs pull off like regular ukulele stuff but it's just kind of like why like that's for something entirely for different you know so when you get a bohannum you get all kinds of uh cool um information and this whole letter and he's got his uh what is it called with the ink um seal no what you like know dip calligraphy oh like a quill yeah or a fountain pen? I think, yeah, maybe he's using the feather of a bald eagle. No, I don't know. But, um, Standard. <laughs> pretty cool. So let's see. One piece Carpathian spruce for the top. The back and size is walnut, Peruvian can you, walnut, yeah. Can you read it like you're reading like an edict from like a king? Like, ah, look at this. Oh, wow, that yeah. a lot. Um, yeah, well, let me hand it off to you. Oh, you want me to do <laughs> All right. How's the intonation, Corey? <laughs> it's, it's off, it's you. Correct. <laughs> if you have intonation problems with this instrument, look at the man in the mirror. There's literally no way around it. Oh, it's cool. because He starts this out perfect. But it could happen. So if you do slip into the radio one. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Bro. We're not gonna put those in there. <laughs> we are. To whom it may concern. Here follows an account of the materials used in the construction of an ukulele as built by Australian Luthier Bohannum. Labeled this number eighty in our year two thousand and eighteen. Body shape, tenor. Scale length, 17 inches, standard. Top, one piece Carpathian spruce, and a word I can't pronounce. Piscia abius. Back, forward slash sides, Peruvian walnut. Juglians, Australis, Neotropica. I'm not going to pronounce those anymore. Rosette, Wengi, Ring, Binding, the same. Perfling, BWB. Bridge, African Blackwood, Neck, Spanish Cedar, Figured. Fingerboard, African Blackwood. Position markers, Bone. Headstock, face, ebony, back, walnut burl, tuners, goto, U-P-T-L, black, nut, black tusk, saddle black tusk, fret wire, none, <laughs> finish, <laughs> nitro gloss, decorative features, <laughs> says an exclamation point, fretless, <laughs> sculpted heel, Figured neck and back wood, side sound port, H, headstock inlay, abstract, but reminiscent of Arabic front. 
Sign Bo Hannum. Bo Hannum once more. Second of this June, 2019. That's delicious. This this paper feels really nice. It's like a it's like a raised nimbus. Man, you know what? You know what's really cool? I was playing it earlier, and like, just play one note, Corey, and try to like roll, like, just kind of. You can almost get like those microtones, which is like in between the half step, you know, by just kind of rolling your finger back and. That right there, those, that note. <laughs> just like that, that, just that you know, one movement. Like those are just slight differences in the note, but you'll hear that in a lot of like Indian and Middle Eastern music and stuff, right? Well, that, that sounds exact yeah. tone. It sounds yeah. like you could also pull off some pretty good early blues. Oh, whoa! You play those two notes. Oh, I'm in the I'm in the desert all of a sudden, and it's hot and I'm sweaty, <laughs> and I have sand in my eyes. <laughs> Ugh, I can't breathe. Yeah. Well, you got the hot and sweaty part down, right? <laughs> I don't know. There's sounds you can get from that that you just can't get from a fretted instrument. No, it's yeah, it's really cool. The the yeah, the attack on the slide because even if you have a fret, it jumps every time you cross a fret. With right. this, it's just a nice clean attack all the way up to the note. And it's it's challenging and it's hard, but like you know, you can also just kind of close your eyes and see how you can hear it out. It's challenging, you know. Because almost looking at it can almost throw you off, right? It's almost like you do have to just hear it. Yeah. I mean, you have to listen because even the slightest, like, you know, bit will change it a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. which, um, which is what had me thinking about that Indian style music and those scales going around it. You know, I think like a lot of it was almost searching for the feel, root, right? you know, it's like that vibrato is almost like you, you overstep and then you back yeah, it up yeah, just yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. It's like you're just finding it there, yeah. right? But it's it became part of the sound. It's like, and what? We kind of yeah. emulate it with those half step harmonic minor things on guitar. But this is like, oh, that sounds like the real yeah. style. So what you're saying is uh, if you want to work on your ear training, you need to buy this ukulele. Yeah, I mean, and doing chords i don't know i heard zach playing chords on it earlier kind of pulling it off it sounds re- I li- like i like the uh, not, not 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 like a dullness but a, like a woodiness to the note right yeah yeah exactly and just like everything that bow makes it's built with a very you know i mean he's got a lot of wisdom when it comes to working with wood he's he's one of the best and and this is um i just think it's it's a wonderful challenge and something entirely different for somebody that's got a collection full of fretted ukes you know do you think you're getting bored (laughs) tackle this challenge yourself it's cool we dare you it's humbling yeah (laughs) watch Corey be humbled right now yeah I, I would think you would almost compose around it, you know, mm-hmm. rather than trying to play what you already play. Yeah, yeah. I because I, I, like you were saying with the effects, that's gonna bring. I guarantee that would bring new things out of you when you right. try to pick that up instead of just trying to play what you always play on it. But it looks like a lot of fun, you know. Like it doesn't yeah. look like a chore. It just looks like something that you could. It's, it's, it's like it's, when you pick up an instrument for the first time you're like right. you're kind of like figuring it out at the same time yeah. so it's it's like an educated guess at what that's like and then you got to figure it out <laughs> I like that. stuff like yeah. that is yeah. like totally it's, unique it to sounds that like instrument. that uh that incubus aqueous transmission oh my god this is like a dream come true right here Forming a sound sample for the ukulele site. Yeah. On a fretless though, you never dreamt that. <laughs> I couldn't even dream that. Right? <laughs> it's like, was it a dream or was it a nightmare? <laughs> There's no friends over here. Jazz, what's up? So it's it's like you can kind of kind of play it light like that and get away with your regular style, or you can like really dig in and get that like Indian flair to it.
I should do it without the. Yeah. This is with him plugged plugged in. This is fun for you though, right? Like figuring it out? Even though it's like a little tricky? It gets like... It gets pretty captivating, you know? Yeah, no, I mean... Next thing you know, hours have gone by. Yeah, like when I said it's humbling, it is, but it's also like... It's kind of cool to have something familiar that you also have to figure out even more than you usually do. In a different way. I like how you can't be lazy with it at yeah, all. Like, at all. You, you can't just like leave your fingers planted behind the fret and you're like, yep, this is where it needs to be. Your fingers are going to move naturally. It's unforgettable. You know? Why does it sound like garbage now? <laughs> even, yeah, even just rolling like the very edge of your finger. That's... <laughs> My playing is really bad all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm on the fifth fret now. <laughs> it puts it puts trying to land your finger right behind the fret in perspective. Like you think right. that's being like super technical, like... for all the violin players who wanted to pick up ukulele and were frustrated by the intonation. I know one. There's a lot. Yeah, she plays like violin and viola and she's looking to get into ukulele. I'm, hey, this might be a good suggestion. Go into it. Start levitating. Should I do like uh, like the tremolo thing on the on the high note where you no um like you know like the no like uh like surf rock kind of stuff or yeah but that's the challenge right on a C string. So I was gonna say it yeah. feels like gravity, like you like you increase the gravity on the note, so mm. the attack is just a very quick like you're throwing something, but instead of it kind of gliding, it has a heavier jimmy. Mm. But it adds a whole new vibe to it. I mean, if I was just listening to this without looking bet money that wasn't an ukulele yeah. oh yeah fact all right 
So if you if you cool. if you have a lot of ukes, you know, maybe you could just rip the frets out of one of them and put some uh, epoxy in there and try to do it. But it worked for Jacko. Short of that, I mean, Bo kind of nailed it here. Yeah, and it's a it's a lot of fun. Mm. Like it feels really good, and you just kind of like you said, you just kind of get lost in it. Yeah, just what works. You it's know. like a new. It feels like a new video game. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to figure it out. It's, I could, I could see hours just yeah, vanishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a black hole for sure. Yeah. I could also see my whole family just staring holes at me. Like I'm watching uh, Corey make breakthroughs on it as we speak. Yeah. Just, oh, this is cool. Yeah, and and it, yeah, you're right. Whatever I was doing, people would think I'm crazy, but. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> That was different? Yeah. You played the same note for the last five I hours. I know, but it sounds oh, cool. <laughs> but then I got it this time. Uh, all right, well, today was kind of a mix of, uh, you know, a number of cool new instruments that are coming in. Um, Victor Joffrey um, showed up today, too, and, and brought us 24 new Asonus. Asonus six strings and tenors and he's coming back tomorrow for um an in-depth look at what he brought and what he's got going on and and um so that's gonna be fun but um thank that's you my Russ. that's my daughter's favorite at the shop oh really yeah absolutely every oh, single time she walks more. in and she goes oh man yeah these are cool yeah they're super cool i really like the six string version of this thing yeah they made now yeah so um, in these, we've got the eight string tenors and these four strings and then the six string version of these with the double two notes. So, Which two notes? The C and the E, I think, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Every time she's like, Dad, play this. you do it like you'll get you'll hit the right notes do you think that you would ever get to the point where you give up the fretted ones if i probably if i play this a lot then you just get used to that flexibility right yeah it's like yeah I, I like being able to just roll my finger and now i'm at a slightly higher pitch Well, I really appreciate you coming out.